is off. Loser's pick for the rest of the best of five, however many times that needs to be done. Looks like we had another donation to the prize pool. Thank you, Mark Brazina, for $20. Nicely done, Zombie Grub. Here's a little for the nice casting and the awesome plays by the girls. Thank you very much. You know, the pros. Pros? Well, hey, they're winning, they're winning money. They're pros. So I hope the players will greatly appreciate that. In fact, I know they will. So good, good, good stuff. All right. Best of five in the bottom right is the blue Zerg. She is Telia. And top left is the Red Terran. She is Deity. Flying on that Cystorm Gaming Community team. Hope she has lots of good practice partners to consistently improve. Telia on Light. I don't believe has many uh, practice partners on that clan. I think it's something that she made herself, but I, I actually have no idea. Light used to be a team. In fact, one of the more prominent NA teams for a while there. They were a Brood War team. Pretty sure about that. Um, kind of a middle ground, you know, okay NA team, then started to get some really nice members like Stardust, I believe? Wasn't he on light? Anyways. Um, but it eventually had to close its doors after a couple years, and uh, in general, only a few NA teams even ended up surviving the rut that was StarCraft II in 2013-14. Root being one of them, but even Root disappeared for a while, if you guys remember that. Anywho. Seems to have fond memories on that team. So, regular hatch opener, regular barracks opener. As I said, Deity might have a couple of Hellbat builds to throw out here. We saw a Battlecruiser build she used against the fake Ragnarok Ket, who was at least Deity skill level, which I, again, I think is Masters 2, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if, if not, like, you know, maybe Masters 3, maybe Masters 1. I mean, whoever it was was, was pretty damn good. That also seems off place, but I don't think it is. It just. This is a very wide smiley. Actually, I think it is off. Is it? Is that off? Oh my god, I'm double guessing myself. We're gonna see. <laughs> Whatever. Not the most important thing if it is, I guess. Um. So yeah, she 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 could definitely throw that out against Telia. I because of what happened, so I was discussing things with Telia, and I know that Telia was not watching most of that series. So Telia might not be quite up to date in what Deity has to throw at her. They have played before. In fact, they played recently in the last tournament where Telia did end up taking it 3-0. Um, generally looking better. Um, not really anything too pointed I can I can talk about saying like, well, Telia was almost on the... Like, eh, no, Telia was, was just performing better last time they played. I don't even think anything sneaky that Deity tried to do worked, if I recall correctly. But she might have those those new tricks up her sleeve, right? The Ballad Cruiser build might throw Telia off more. Maybe she has a Hellbat build she's been working on or something like that. Maybe she got better at the execution, at the follow-up, all those types of things, right? Um, but Telia wouldn't know that as she was practicing, playing her own games, whatever it was. She only got to see the second half of the second game. So I don't know if she realized it was a Ballad Cruiser opener or not. Thing is, this Ballad Cruiser opener, which I, I might be talking too much about, I think we'd see the fusion core soonish if it was going to be that. Um, aha, I was right. So, okay, so perfect. I can continue talking about it without being off topic. So, the Battle Cruiser opener is okay, like a little funny. It's, you know, a little cheesy. But I think if you were in chat when it happened the first time, you saw a lot of people kind of mention it. You now, maybe they're laughing, maybe they're lolling, but some of the people were actually saying how kind of stupid it was. How BS it was, how it gives people trouble, how, you know, whatever, whatever. And it has been kind of a popular build longer than I thought it would be. I don't think it's still that good. Pro Zerg seems to have a handle on it by now. But it is something that Telia might struggle with, sure. It's definitely something that she's faced by now, playing as much as she does in the ladder. If she hasn't, I'd be a little shocked. You know, I haven't faced it, but I don't play Zerg. And it's not great in TVT, not that great. So, the thing is, I guess this is all coming down to the fact that Telia isn't so... I hesitate to use the word great because it's more like a decision. So, I guess I should say it more like, Telia doesn't find it pertinent to continually scout. <laughs> um, which I think is a weakness, but there are those games where Serral plays right against any race where he seemingly knows everything that's happening without 
any scouting whatsoever and you're like, well, this guy's just a genius. There are very non-obvious ways you can scout a person. But it seems like Telia has played quite a few games where she's been knocked down a peg. Either she literally lost drones or started to miss macro or... Hell, she's even lost a couple of games um, in the ZVZs because she didn't see an all incoming. And that's either because she's, you know, focused more on what she's doing and she's not reading the clues given to her by whatever scouting she does have, or it's because she straight up needs to start sending in overlords to scout, you know, getting overlord speed, something like that. Or in this case, just getting lings in the main base. That's cool too. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, that's really unfortunate. Deity does not reveal the battle cruisers, but that is, oh uh, yeah. Oh, actually this isn't so bad. This is not so bad. Telia's trying to like micro against it. And she realizes there's a little too few lings there. Actually ends up going okay. All right, there we go. That, that's more what Telia was expecting. <laughs> and she got the almost around in the hell end. I think Telia was expecting it to just win, but anyways. Um, Deity loses SCVs, also maybe some Miss Micro. The Bowcruz isn't doing nearly as much as she was hoping for. As Celia's queens are plentiful in number, as well as all supporting each other, which was a key weakness of the other Zerg we saw today up against the same build. The army wasn't done either, so I don't know if Deity just simply messed up the build or decided she didn't want to do that version of it this time. I'm not sure, but now it's on the way, which seems certainly late to the party. And even if it was done, the Hellions had all died, right? If the Hellbats were here all together, there would have been like 8 or 10 Hellbats. I really think this is a decent amount of damage. All the Lings die. All the all the Lings get barbecued to 10 Hellbats. And there are no Banelings or Roaches quite yet. Not made anyways. And the Queens would have to do their little micro dance again, which would open up opportunities to get damage done. Um, but instead, the Hellings die. The Hellbats aren't there. The Battlecruiser gets severely weakened. Kind of just like runs through all the bases. <laughs> away from the Queens. And the start isn't as good as Deity was hoping for. She at least saved the Battlecruiser, and she's not going to go into bio from this, but rather into mech. So maybe this was a conscious decision not to go for those earlier Hellbats, but rather to, to push it off and just kind of do the harassment with just the Battlecruisers and just regular Hellions had they not died. But this was really, especially the Battlecruiser, Hellions too, but especially the Battlecruiser, I think was really supposed to do a lot more. And I'm not talking, like, kill 20 drones a lot more and have a substantial kill count. Oh, kill a lot of links. I'm talking, like, it's supposed to really throw off your opponent. Um, I'll kill 10 drones. All right. Okay, two battlecruisers this time. The third one's on the way. Like, she's she's going for the real battlecruiser here. Battlecruiser game. And Terran players are continuing to adapt their battlecruiser openers. I know Lambo was having trouble against someone who was uh, following up with mech, but... Hold on. Those are the only queens left over. I thought Tilly had more queens. No, that was it. Those are those are all of her queens. She's making four now with her hatcheries. In fact, the fifth hatchery just finished. She could be making five queens at a time. But the Hellbats hold the link counters on this other side, and that's why Mech can be very, very good against Telia. As Telia is most annoying with her lings. Hydras are now on the way, and a lot of Hydras at that. Teleport's not quite ready to go, so the, the Battlecruisers actually do desperately need this Skedaddle. But they're Skedaddling on creep, so the Hydra is very easily catching up to them. They don't have range or speed, but they are still able to catch up. The Battlecruiser even stops moving for a second there, and boom, there goes both Battlecruisers. Not worth it at the end of the day, I don't think. Battlecruiser is very expensive, very long units to make as well. Oh, oh, that's what happened. She actually went for a second fusion core. I didn't even notice. All right, so she definitely meant to have that armory. Regardless, her Hellions had died, so we're, we're past that. We're past that. We're in a minute nine. We're past the openers. But the Battlecruiser just died. And they're no longer able to harass. They're no longer able to support the army. They're no longer able to help defend should a counter happen. Killing all the queens was nice, but... Losing both Battlecruisers is absolutely not nice. Uh. Now, I don't think that was a game-ending move, because Tila has no uh, grounds to really counter on. Just Hydras would probably get barbecued by simply the Hellions, although Blue Flame isn't done. Um, so it would be a little too dangerous, right? The army is not that big for Tilia. So the game isn't over, and if the game's not over and the mech player's on three bases going up to four, then there's always a game to be played out. But I am worried about what mech specifically Deity is going for. So Hellions getting the natural, but not enough to really scare the drones. Fifth base is known about, but not able to quite do anything about it. Uh, fifth base is now in a way. Wow, okay. Fortunately, that is seen by the Overlord. Oh, not quite. 
the mining will be seen, but maybe Deity's hoping that this will be the main focus and this will be kind of a free a freebie there. It might happen like that. Oh. Okay, what happened like that? Okay, cool. But can she even hold this fourth base? She might get a free fifth base, but can she hold the fourth base? Uh, I was talking about how I'm a little scared about what mech deity is doing. That is because she's going for cyclone mech. Uh, which, you know, if, if everything's going smoothly, if you've done your damage and you've, um, you're have you harassing with the battle cruisers and you're keeping tabs with the Hellions, uh, then cyclone follow-ups are, are more immediate than usual mech follow-ups and can be a surprise. Unfortunately, in this game, I think things might have already kind of snowballed too heavily in Telia's favor. And this is one of those games where you need to be defensive and you need to just hope that Telia overextends. Although, this is where, you know, even the caster starts really underestimating Cyclones. Because once they start retreating, they do add on a lot of damage. Once Telia starts retreating, suddenly she loses all of her army. So that's always a trick to it, is how those last 5, 10 seconds of the battle actually goes. But I think this is just snowballing too much in Telia's favor. You know, she's she's really got Deity on the back foot, though. Even though Deity might survive and she has five bases, 73 SCVs, Celia has her own five bases, dealt with the harassment finally over here, and has a lot of creeps her to work with, and now knows that she's up against Cyclone Mech, which, you know, you get a couple of Vipers for some Blinding Clouds, you actually get some surrounds on them with maybe some Lings when they go on creep. I think defensively, Celia is fine as long as she's smart about it. Offensively, Maybe a little bit trickier, but I don't, I don't, I feel like this is the time, you know, 12 minutes in the game, five bases where that cyclone attacks so have already happened. They've already done their thing. They're kind of starting to wean off a little bit. That's when you're starting to go into tanks again. That's when you're transferring over. Instead, we have Deity desperately trying to rebuild a cyclone army against what ends up being pure Hydra, by the way. It's like no lings included here. And now Deity loses her fourth base. That wasn't quite a planetary, though she does have a fifth as a planetary rebuilding for fourth base. She's gonna have to deal with Hive Tech soon enough. We got double Spire on the way, one for a Greater Spire, one for an upgrade, three, three on the way for the Hydras. Things are looking really quite good for our Zerg player, but Deity, maybe, maybe if she could hold on the four bases at least, those eight Gas Geysers, and get up to a high Battle Cruiser count. Now she's on double production for them. Maybe she can start surprising Celia with her defenses, but I am hesitant to believe that. Thank you, Stinger Fidelis, for the four-month reset. The wife and I love the content. Thank you very much. Appreciate the kind words and the resub. Gotta keep sending those Hellions out. Usually you're allowed to send the Hellions out too without too much backlash. You know, they produce really quickly, they're cheap, they're minerals only, they're reactored out, so on and so forth. So you're able to consistently send those Hellions out. But with how the game has gone, it's, you know, it's not really working. There's too much creep spread for them to even do anything. Even if, like, two or three sets of them were thrown out. And then you do have to be careful not to send out all your Hellions, as they are that kind of substantial, important buffer to the Cyclones or tanks or whatever, what else, whatever else you have. And I kind of wish it was tanks, but it seems like we're really going into the whole Battlecruiser thing. We got the plus three attack on the way, plus two armor. Battlecruisers have naturally high armor. Sometimes you see an emphasis even on the armor to uh, make them look really stupid. <laughs> but uh, going for the ship weapons first. The uh, Vipers are going to be absolutely critical here. In fact, I would love to see more than two Vipers. The two abducts. 50% of the Battlecruisers immediately. That's not great. They could also abduct the Cyclones. They could Blinding Cloud. Not even really necessary. Deity not able to hold up against just what is, again, a purely mass Hydra. A couple queens added in. GG. Telia able to take down that style rather easily. There was a point where Deity almost was able to do enough damage to kind of start a snowball to at least have Telia temporarily be on the back foot. And then she lost those two battle cruisers, which, you know, you say the word two, it doesn't sound like a lot. You, know, you lose two Hellions on a lot. But two battle cruisers early on, that is really, 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 really big deal. A lot of times when battle cruiser players lose, well, they might just be worse. It's very true. But it's also because they didn't micro that one battle cruiser well enough. And that one battle cruiser would have been three battle cruisers at the time of an attack, and that would have been just barely enough with two tanks. But suddenly it's only two battle cruisers. Is that quite like it's? It's so snowbally. 
know, with the idea of that attack being that you're buying time and just generally being annoying, like, you're supposed to get all these bases up kind of for free and it doesn't happen, well, suddenly you're, uh, you're not behind number-wise so much as you're behind pacing-wise. You're just overwhelmed by the Zerg very quickly. Not that I do that type of build, by the way, or that type of style very very often. In fact, never. I never do with Mass Cyclone. I've always hated it. But I also don't do Battle Cruisers. I'm a hater. But I've watched it, not just in this patch, but in other patches where people were like, oh, Battle Cruisers are slightly changed. Maybe they're good again. And it's like, oh, actually, they're still not that great. But they do sometimes really catch your opponent off guard. Obviously, Telia had that under wraps. I, I really want Deity to do... I don't even mind if she did the battle cruiser thing again, as much as that didn't really work. Because at least she saved the first battle cruiser. And I think she simply moves way faster after killing those queens, and she saves the other two as well. But say she goes to the battle cruiser or whatever hell about attack opener again, I would actually like for her to do mech again. In fact, I'd really like it. I wanted to do tanks, of course. Don't like cyclones. It's always going to be my bias. But I also just think that it's so much easier to deal with Telia when you don't have to worry about her Ling Run dies. And Hellbat attacks, uh, Hellbat defenses rather, are such an easy way of dealing with it. You put two Hellbats in your mineral lines, boom. She has to make Banelings to do it, which she can do, of course. She has the APM and the Micro to do it, but she actually is, is usually um, not one to do that. What am I trying to do here? There we go. Or, instead of mech, just end the game early. In the top left, sending out two SCVs. One SCV, it is the blue Terran deity. She might send out a second SCV now. There we go. All right. So, oh, okay. So it's going to be Mass Marines. On top right, as the Red Zerg, she is Telia. And she does usually open that hatch gas pool. Doesn't really worry about early all-ins too much. I think someone has tried two-raxing her before. Uh, and someone might have tried four-raxing, three-raxing her before, but I'm not quite 100% sure. I don't remember how it went, actually. We're gonna see how this goes, though. Can't remember any previous attempts of the Terran player to do this against Telia, but I, I know it's happened. I can't remember how it goes. Don't even remember if it resulted in a win or a loss. We're gonna see how this one goes here. It's gonna go unscouted. Telia searching at least one direction for potential barrack spots, but these are somewhat still new maps with trickier terrain to really figure out. And she is just completely not going in the right direction if she was trying to scout for these barracks. So, Marine Rush it is. And not just a Marine Rush, but, you know, a lot of Marines. Not just a simple two barracks. And, oh, I guess I didn't do that much. Let's go back home and macro. No, when you see three, uh, you're kind of expecting to end the game right then and there. If you see four, you're expecting to just run up the ramp and hopefully win. Which can happen. But three, kind of that middling number, so you're gonna go for the bunker. No Overlord saying put here to see SEVs. That's the other option. You can either gamble a little bit and send both Overlords out to common locations of proxies, or you can keep your second one at home and at least see the SEV coming forward. She neither scouts it nor sees the SEVs. This is the first indication that an all in is on the way, the bunker being seen now. No chance to cancel the hatchery. He's going to choose to go for a spine curl and a natural. And you can kind of walk that forward at a key point in time. But the fact that a bunker is already done is rather bad news for a defending Zerg player. You know, the best case scenario is that you see this on the way. Uh, and then you're able to pull the drones and cancel a couple of these bunkers, cook up the SUVs. This is looking kind of scary for that hatchery. Celia will have multiple options to choose from when her hatchery dies, but if her choice is to advance forward the spine crawlers and rush with literally everything she has, lings, queens, drones, what have you, and she doesn't break the bunkers, that's game. That's it. The spine crawlers do outrange the bunker, but the SCV still repairing means that it's really quite complicated. 
you can migrate against the spine crawlers if you're really, really good, like Marine King Prime kind of good, but it's very difficult to do. Eventually, the spine crawlers will win out, I suppose, especially if they're able to target part of the SCs of the Queens. But actually, the Lings just bust in here, get some good wraparounds on the bunkers. Spine crawler is still attacking here. And Telia is going to be able to save her hatchery, save her queen, save both spine crawlers, and now no longer has to worry about the bunker. This bunker's out of range of her hatchery. Not a big deal. Eddie has gone back into producing SCVs, but with three racks being quite a committal, I'm not sure a follow up is actually uh, possible. I think you just die from here. The hatchery didn't go down, no drones went down. Yeah. GG, Telia holds, but good attempts. Good thought process there. We gotta mix things up, but what is the final choice for Deity? A potential final choice. She's got the map choice. It's gonna be blue shift, so pretty normal map. She's gonna go into bio. Just a hell about attack. Try the mech thing again. I'd personally play mech. Whenever that day comes that I, I play in my own tournaments, and I have to face Telia in the finals, assuming I don't even get to the finals. Uh, I'd probably do mech. Last game, potentially coming up here. Telia versus Deity. Deity not quite figuring out trick to beating our champion. But who can blame her? No one's figured it out quite yet. I think Anders Craft is the person who just donated. $30 to bump that prize pool all the way up to 270 So thank you very much for that. We have now hit our goal. And if you would like to support the tournaments, you can do so in two weeks' time and support the players that join up there. In the bottom left, as the Blue Terran, she is Deity. Uh-oh. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> in the top right, as the Red Zerg, she is Telia. Holds on to the three racks without even scouting it. Holds on against the battle cruisers with a lot of ease. Really patching up those holes, I suppose, in the early game. But I think there's still opportunities. I think what you like the the best thing to do is is to you know try and hit her where it hurts in the early game. A hell about attack, surprise banshees, surprise battle cruiser. But then you do need some really good macro behind it. And that has been what's missing, I think, from all of our competitors, is that that really strong follow-up. Deity, not quite strong enough with the Cyclone follow-up, and also, you know, the Battlecruiser's actually dying wasn't so great. Um, Kyla in the past had a couple of really strong Hellion run-bys, which weren't a very strong committal. They were just kind of almost free damage. Six Hellions down for like 20 drones, 30 drones at one, uh, one of those games. But she didn't quite have a uh, strong enough follow-up to it. It seems to be what the problem is, and it does just prove that Telia is really strong mechanically with the foundations, as well as her decision making, because she almost always seems to find those open weaknesses of her opponent and capitalize on them strongly enough. Is there a rule to keep GMs out of this? Nope. I remember Miss Spite was GM for a short while uh, years ago. There is no rule to keep GMs out of this. If you're a woman, then you can play. It's just that they haven't joined. Why don't I play in this tournament? Just curious, because I'm casting it. I feel like that is the most obvious answer. Not to, you know, make fun of anyone who asks, but <laughs> I feel like that's the obvious answer. The question probably is more along the lines of, will you ever consider playing in this tournament? Which is a maybe. Maybe I will. 
But not to toot my own horn or anything. I think I would get definitely to the semifinals and maybe even to the finals. Um, so it's not like I can just play in one match and be like, oh, I lost. Like, let's go on a cast. So it would be trading out casting for playing. Well, we got a little bit of a hidden star port all the way to the left side. Uh, I can see Ilya kind of missing the, the scouting in the early game. I could talk about how you can scout. This is still a starport opener, regardless of whether or not you literally scout the starport or not, but it seems like a moot point because Tila is not going to scout for it anyways. Not going to have the units in the appropriate position. You know, her overload's over here where it doesn't really see much. It could suicide in, but she doesn't usually do that. There's one over here that could suicide in, but it doesn't usually do that. Usually the Overlord is more around here or here, and you can see if a Supply Depot is building on the natural, which um, if that was comboed with this Overlord over here, seeing no Starport here, and that's where you have to start questioning, are they hiding a Starport or are they building a third Command Center? Because that's usually the two choices. You can kind of tell by whether or not they're building a Supply Depot. But she doesn't have any of those Overlords anywhere. <laughs> so, as I said, kind of a moot point. Uh, the Lings could get into the natural again, obviously, but Stady's gonna be really on top of not letting him into the main, which they didn't get into the main the first time she tried Battle Cruisers, and this is, once again, Battle Cruisers. But it is more about fixing those mistakes that she made in the first game, right? She's gonna continue not letting this be scouted. She's gonna continue using the Battle Cruisers to her ass, but she has to start not losing the Battle Cruisers and start having a really strong follow-up. Uh, there is a rather punishing counter you can do against a battle cruiser opener, by the way. If you're if you're really good, if your mechanical skills are really good, I think Lambo has been showing it off on his stream. I'm not sure if Telia knows about it or not, but it is um, it is like a Roach Ravager Queen drop, I believe, something like that. And I, it almost feels like she was planning on it, but she's getting an upgrade, which I'm not sure if you do that. I don't think get an upgrade if you're gonna do the counter all in. And again, Tila doesn't quite know that it's battle cruisers, so you know she's. How can she counter something she doesn't know is on the way? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so it's gonna be one one. So let's more of, uh, definitely more of a macro build with some uh, secure roaches, safety roaches here. Good choice. Good choice. Lings do get to the natural, but as long as they don't get into the main. Oh lordy! Almost got into the main. Uh, let me get this overload over here. Okay, so they saw a third... Okay, they saw barracks. I could look over here, I'm dumb. They saw barracks on the way, so they she knows that it's bio. It's still kind of a question of what happened with that starport, or if it's a third CC. Um, but now she realizes, hey, there was a starport! Hey, there's battle cruisers! And what could she not do? This game, she didn't build any safety spore crawlers, so that idea of a hidden starport didn't actually arise in her brain. She will lose a couple of queens for it, but if the battle cruiser dies, again, I don't think it's worth it. Even though this isn't as much of a committal to battle cruisers as the first game, you still don't want to lose this battle cruiser. I think the ideal way to play with it is to knock off the queen here and then escape to the left, not to the right. Unfortunately, it doesn't even get that second queen, right? Oh, she did get two queens, okay. Well, still. Didn't get that third queen. And uh, the hellbats. Wait. Okay, well, the hellbats died. <laughs> I was assuming looking at the battle cruiser, but it looks like those hellbats didn't do anything because it was a roach opener, so very secure against any type of hellion hellbat attack. Deity, unfortunately, failing hard with this opener, trying to go into that bio, is now missing her tank because it's blocked. Oh no! Oh, it looks such a it's it's such pretty Sim City too. If it wasn't for that, and this looks like it's gonna be game over. Um, I mean, coincidentally, kind of countering the Battle Cruiser Hellbat opener, but actually more so going for a 1 1 Roach attack. It's gonna work out really well, and Deity tried to mix things up, is unable to actually punish Tilly at all this game, and that is, is gonna be it. Hello! Can't play and cast at the same time. It's rather hard, I'll tell you that much. Now, Deity might just be able to hold here as she finally gets her tanks uh, out of there. I. If this was the other side of the map, I think they're fine, but because there's a tech lab here, I don't think they pop on that right side, do they? I don't know, but... Uh, even if she holds, she doesn't take a lot of damage. In fact, her third base is gonna die, and that might even cause a tap out, depending on her mentality right now. Ooh, it doesn't die. 
super mass repair and Celia kind of over overestimates her position dives forward for it and the units and dies to two tanks a lot of just die to it saves most of the ravages I suppose and I was correct the tanks cannot be rallied to the right side so this a little extra annoyance on top of a game you already know isn't going well eh, not a good feeling Looks like she's just manly picking up the tanks with the medevacs, which should be enough. Loses one tank, though. Still not a decent trade. Behind this, Telia is starting to miss macro, but there we go. More drones on the way. Fourth hatchery on the way. Fifth hatchery should probably be on the way. She's continuing to build roaches. She doesn't necessarily need a macro hatchery. Could just add on a fifth instead. She's also kind of low on that creep spread. She does have extra queens. She's not using them. So there are ways that if Deity could hold, if she held better right if those tanks were in proper placement from the get-go and she had saved more of her bio army this is a game that tila could easily throw away because she's not macroing appropriately but it, it went the way it did didn't it and uh deity is not as far behind as she should be she still is pretty far behind oh neat did you hit 20k followers this stream oh really cool i meant to do a Celebration for that, but oh well. Is Celia undefeated in the Banshees? Yeah, she is. Closest someone got was QB with a 2-3 uh, score against her. Almost took her down. And then I think QB almost took her down again. Like, that, that's two times that she's gotten a 2-3 against Celia, but Celia was able to bring it back. It was really cool. <clears throat> Finals. And yeah, we'll see what Dandy can do to... to bring this back I mean you gotta you gotta go Super Saiyan you know if Telia was maxing out on Roaches and Ravagers and that's all she was doing I think you could just play defensively and hope that she over extends into tanks again but once you realize that they're going up to Hive which she hasn't scanned but might be feeling anyways you can't really just sit back I mean I guess you could but you'd be sitting back preparing to defend against Hive Tech with an army that's not even one for these apply yet you know you're you're gonna really struggle to get those late game units. So instead you gotta go Super Saiyan, start dropping everywhere while building an army, hopefully hitting before Breedlers are quite ready to go. Um, things that are both, you know, they're gonna reflect on your skill, your ability to drop and harass and deal damage and keep your very few units alive, but also somewhat on your opponent messing up. Which is not usually what you're banking on in StarCraft. It's not a good thing to bank on in StarCraft anyways. The assumption is usually that your opponent's doing everything correctly, even though it's obviously not true. Uh, okay, that was kind of a weird pickup, but... I like the idea. Now, there are Bane Langs, so being this far in a creep is gonna hurt Deity once again. It seems to be one of the bigger weaknesses that our Terran player has. Um, her macro seems to be good, her build order choices are good, you know, decent timings, right, on her, on her upgrades. All good stuff, but she does have a nasty habit of swimming forward and, uh, with all of her army. Oh my god, she finds a good Aspire, though. Oh my god, Celia. Ooh, ouchies. Well, the Corruptors can still be used to take out the Medivacs. Not a complete loss, I suppose, in making those. But the Great Aspire was a really nice snipe. Unfortunately, this huge Ling attack does have some upgrades at 1-2 and finds their way into the natural the third base. On top of the fourth base, it's not going to be canceled. Deity has to make a decision. Does she go for it? If it was purely against Roaches and Ravages, I would say go for it, go for it, go for it. But it's like up against Banelings, and you don't really want to rush yourself on creep against a Zerg player that has Banelings. That just will not look very pretty, even if you had a substantial army supply. All right, there we go. See, now she's sending her Marauders forward, which is a much safer way to do it, but... Things might be a little too late. You're also gonna have a big old wraparound with these Lings. Plus three of Carapace is almost done. Perhaps Celia is waiting for that. These Marowaks are already low, so as the Carapace come in to kill them, I won't even mean truly necessary. I think Telia has got this. I mean, it was a little scary, you know, Telia definitely banking a lot of cash and money, trying to be a little greedy going that fast up into Broodlords, but it does work out. Deity taking too much damage, or rather dealing not enough damage in the early game. It's going to be 3-0 for our Zurich champion once again. It's getting rather comfy in that top spot, but I'm...